MedTech Live, together with MedTech Summit, Congress and Partnering. Connecting the medical technology supply chain. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we will talk about 3D surgical planners. Um, my name is Alexander Kmiel, uh, and I'm a senior medtech solution consultant in DataArt, uh, where we help build medical planners, simulators, implant shape generators, uh, software for processing diagnostic results, and radiological data. Uh, sometimes we utilize AI and machine learning algorithms for that. Well, um, let's start with problems. So. Um, the some problem that surgeons might have to deal with before and during an operations. So before performing a surgery, it is important to assess its feasibility to avoid possible risks. Um, this means surgeons have to first make a decision if a particular operation can be performed under given circumstances. Yet another risk is intraop uh, complications that um, can occur uh, unexpectedly, uh, which leads to longer surgery and hospitalization time. Um, it is true that we have 2D planners now that are widely used, but the problem is that they often don't provide enough information uh, to support decisions, especially when it is um, it has to do with particular risks related cases when bones are significantly deformed or have an unusual internal structure. Um, another significant risk is implant misfit. Uh, it is hard to predict the kind of best fit for every patient. This again leads to potential multiple surgeries and longer hospitalization time. Uh, but we um, have and use a technology to address all of this, uh, the listed problems. Uh, I'm talking about 3D surgical planners, of course. So um, let's look at what kind of planners um, uh, allow. Uh, first of all, such planners allow uh, visualization of a potential surgery outcome in 3D. Uh, then they can also potentially short the surgery operation time and estimate uh, a correct implant size and fit that I mentioned before uh, when we are talking about implantology. And that's not a complete list of the features. Uh, I will get back to this later in the presentation. Um, let me show you how it works. An example of a planner that we at DataR designed and built for our client. Okay. Um, this is the 3D planner for hip resurfacing with ceramic on ceramic implants. So as an input information, we have a CT scan of a joint and a segmented 3D model produced from this particular scan, match it in the same coordinate system. On this screenshot, you can see a regular CT view uh, where the 3D model views uh, uh, slice it uh, with respective cut planes. So when you navigate through CT layers, you can see how those cut planes move on the bottom right screen. Uh, this particular mode is intended to perform examination of the case both for CT and 3D model. Um, in this mode, uh, a user can perform placement of femoral head. It can be done by moving the head with uh, your computer mouse on any desired window or by tuning uh, parameters on the right panel with small increments. There are plenty of information messages that are intended to guide and warn if, any, if anything is potentially wrong. Here, for example, we see the message. Um, let me just this one. Um, the message that um, uh, bone notching uh, is present in, in this case. Uh, and in addition, a user can see where it is located um, as it is marked red on the model in the lower two windows. Um, yeah, in this areas around. Okay. Um, this usually forces the user to pick a larger implant pair size or push the implant closer to the femoral neck. Also, as implants are tied together, the acetabular cup is moving along with the head, but virtually. So you can check its position in a different mode. Um, that's very quick and brief um, showcase how it might work. So um, let's jump to the features. So um, uh, to sum up, uh, 
as you can see, the virtual, um, the visual perception here is vast and allows us to see all the important details. The next big thing is the ability to easily manipulate bones and implants. Uh, the software is highly responsive, so any interaction works in real time. Yeah, and in addition to that, there is an immediate incorrect position warning system that notifies the user about that right away. Um, last but not least, the software automatically generates a PDF surgery plan that you can uh, easily print and take with you to the theater. Okay, so um, let's consider some challenges that are tied to this kind of software. And first, of course, is approval by regulatory institutions such as FDA or EMA. Um, this kind of software as a device usually falls into class two medical devices. Uh, next is acceptance by the medical community. Still, a lot of surgeons tend to use more traditional ways to plan surgeries, uh, but I'm sure that it will change in the near future. Uh, another big challenge is to create simple um, uh, intuitive and usable interface uh, to be easy to use by the average surgeon. Uh, one more challenge is to integrate such a software into the regular surgery practices, but I'm proud to state that we were able to successfully deal with these challenges. Okay, um, well, now let's look at the benefits uh, through G surgery, surgery planners are able to provide. First of all, when using such a planner, a doctor can have very clear 3D images of a body part before starting an operation. So a doctor is better prepared for the operation. Secondly, some surgeries require control during the procedure and a 3D planners allow this as well because you can use that on, the, on your screens in the theater. Um, this leads to better surgery outcomes. Um, all of that helps to reduce risks of complication or implant misfits that we mentioned before. And another very important aspect that needs to be mentioned here is unique UI UX design for each planner, which allows a specific approach to a particular type of surgery. Um, okay, and um, in this short presentation, I have described only one type of 3D surgery planner, um, and it is a hypersurfacing planner. But the use of such planners is not limited to just this kind of operation. Uh, let's have a look at some other areas where such planners can be applied. Uh, talking about orthopedics in general, we can build such a planner for knees, elbows, shoulders, and spine as well. Um, next is, of course, orthodontics, uh, where in the planner we can simulate an entire treatment plan along with data for production of braces and aligners. Uh, cranial and facial reconstruction are way more complex and are performed individually, but we see a potential of creating a universal planner for such kind of surgery. Um, regular plastic surgery planners will be able to immediately present the final result of the procedure to a surgeon as well as to a patient. And another application of the technology is soft tissue surgery. Uh, the technology is there, but it is quite complex to build a fast working planner because soft tissues require higher computational power and we need to provide a very different approach if compared to dealing with bones. But we are moving there quickly enough and most probably we will have one built in the next decade. Uh, that's uh, pretty everything from myself. Um, thank you. And if you have any questions, you can uh, email uh, us or ask me directly through uh, the system messages. Thank you. Bye bye. MedTech Live, together with MedTech Summit, Congress, and partnering. Connecting the medical technology supply chain.